Welcome to Unlocked, the world's number one Xbox show here at IGN. Coming up on this week's show, it is all about the Scorpio tech details being revealed. A lot of jargon. We'll try to cut through it for you. Also, a spiritual successor to NBA Jam and NBA Street gets announced out of nowhere. Pleasant surprise there. Uh, plus, Agents of Mayhem, the next game from the Saints Row guys, gets a date. And we'll see what else we have time for. But first, uh, we got to start right where it matters, which is Scorpio. I'm Ryan McCaffrey to my right, Destin Legary. Hey everybody. Alana Pierce and Marty Sleva Whoa. rounding out the crew. So It's early. Well, for us. Sleep. Yeah, <laughs> not, not for whoever's watching or listening. <laughs> yeah. So uh, perk up over there, Destin. <laughs> we'll get there. But yeah, we got a, uh, a lot of information on the Scorpio this, t this morning as of our recording, uh, thanks to an exclusive from our friends at Eurogamer slash Digital Foundry, the absolute experts in jargon. And I mean that in the most complimentary way, because uh, those guys understand tech at the uh, deepest, darkest levels. And they got to go to Microsoft campus and see uh, a, a lot, not mm -hmm. uh, as far as the hardware goes. So uh, I guess we'll start with the overview. Here's what we know so far. Uh, this thing is going to have an internal power supply, the same way the Xbox One S does, which is great news. Mm -hmm. In fact, it'll take the same plug. It's got a 4K Blu-ray drive in it, which you would probably have assumed, given the S does. You mm -hmm. can't, can't imagine the premium product wouldn't have had it, but confirmation that it will be there. A one terabyte hard drive. Not solid state. Not a solid state drive, uh, but a one terabyte hard drive. I, I was hoping for a little more, but I was also figuring it was probably going to be yeah. one terabyte. Mm -hmm. And a, a very unique cooling architecture that helps them pull off all the the little magic tricks that they're they're trying to get out of this thing. Vapor chamber heat sink cooling. Marty. Vape chamber. So, Why did you look at me? <laughs> oh, I know you love to vape. So it's 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 the hipster console yeah. at vapes. <laughs> <laughs> it would fit in well in San Francisco. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, what did you guys think of of everything that you read after digging through the the, uh, the article? It was interesting. I mean, for me, it's nice to see that it's going to be much more powerful. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of it's a lot of tech jargon, so it's really really cool. I'm really obviously still excited about the Scorpio, but for me, like I want to see stuff running on it. We only got that one image of Forza. We still it have to see it in gorgeous, person, you know. Like yeah, yeah. it's so hard to stream those things or watch a video because <laughs> you can't necessarily have a uh, 4K monitor. Mm -hmm. So we need to see that stuff in person. The thing that excited me is that um, they said that it will be a VR ready out of the box. And uh, again, we still don't really know what that means, but yeah. I've been banking on that for such a long time. I really want VR on Xbox, and uh, that was the one thing I was hoping for the most with this. And um, it seems like that. Well, when when Phil was here, uh, he did he sort of intimated that it won't be right away. That they'll they're they're kind of going to sit on the sidelines of VR yeah. for a little while. No, I, I get that. I think uh, I think Marty relayed that to me. Where mm -hmm. he, he, the idea was that they don't want to make VR until the hardware is really good for everyone whereas right now it is really bulky there's a lot of cords and i yeah. totally kind of I, I respect that like they're not rushing to produce a product um they're <laughs> waiting until they think it's the right time and waiting until it will actually be really feasible so um yeah i'm, I'm stoked about that yeah I, th I thought it was interesting that they detailed how um how this will benefit people if you have a 4k tv versus how it will benefit pe people like me who just have a 1080 tv mm -hmm. and i really I, I don't intend on upgrading to a 4k tv you know anytime soon i'm yeah. super happy with my tv but uh the fact that for you know current xbox one games that you own and 360 games even that there will be improved things like frame rate and improved uh load times like i think that's cool granted there's not a whole lot of games right now that like the load times really upset me with and a lot of yeah. games do end up getting patched yeah. for better load times. Um, I feel like the only game this generation that had bad load times was Bloodborne at launch, and that's obviously I mean, not an Xbox problem. You say that, but there's always a thing where you think load times are fine, and I'm, then you try it on something sure. better, and then you go back <laughs> yeah, and you're no, like, no, no, oh, totally. no. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you. I mean, uh, Doom from last year's yeah. good example. I played it on PC, yeah, because that's that's right yeah. to my PC roots, and then uh, playing it on, uh, so I think it was Jose and I were. We're on a, a trip, and he brought his PS4 yeah. on a work trip, playing on PS4. Not that the load times were terrible, but it was just, just like... in comparison. Yeah. What? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the thing is you only notice when you see a side-by-side. -side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, pretty yeah. much. I also like the super sampling note for uh, 4K on a 1080 monitor. That's going to be great yeah. for 1080 yeah. owners. Uh, they're guessing the price based on the guts will be 499 How do you feel about that? I still I, I maintain my stance that as an as an armchair asshole on the internet i think that's a bad idea yep of course microsoft's full of people that are 
uh, a lot savvier and smarter than me, but I still think I, they can premium the hell out of this thing and say it's going to be this much better and that much better, but when you are the second place console, hey, it's they're selling well, but they are not the market mm -hmm. leader, I just don't think you can go above your, comp yeah. your competition. Yeah, well, especially this, still if it is 500 this fall, there's, you know, there are going to be 250 dollar ps4 bundles yeah and so like how do you literally like how do you compete when your thing is literally twice as expensive you know well, if it is again phil again when he when he was here did say that they expect to sell way more mm -hmm. xbox one s's so yeah. not quite maybe not a sure, fair comparison yeah, yeah. there but but if i'm you know if i either maybe i haven't upgraded yet at all this generation or i've got a ps4 or xbox one i'm thinking and i got a 4k tv and i think all right, well, do I want to just go ahead and go with the PS4 Pro, or ooh, do I want to go with this shiny, newer, fancier mm -hmm. Scorpio? Eh, $499 versus $399 for the Pro. So yeah. that's where I think it's, well, I don't know. You know, in terms of marketing, uh, if it's a better product and it's slightly more expensive, you can trick people into thinking that something is of far more value. Like, th that's actually a strategy that's like, well, we make it more com expensive than our competitor, so people automatically, even on a shelf, if they don't want to buy one, think our brand is better quality than our competitor. Didn't work for Xbox One compared yeah. to it, PS4. No, it, yeah. it, well, but they had a terrible launch. That's. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like it, this, like, it could legitimately be a thing. I, I only say this because I studied marketing, uh, that they would make this more expensive in the hopes that people will think the Xbox brand is more quality and then will buy Xbox One Ss. Like, that could legitimately be a thing, but my, my formal guess is probably that... The biggest difference between the two companies in terms of this kind of stuff is Microsoft doesn't make all of their money off of Xbox. It's a huge company. True. Whereas Sony has PlayStation really driving them. And you imagine someone like Phil goes to head office and is like, all right, this is how much we want it to cost. They're like, what? How much are we going to lose on that? How much profit is that? And they're like, no, not enough. Bring it up. Whereas Sony's direction is, is a lot more PlayStation focused. So it's different for them, I think. The head office is known as the vapor chamber. The vapor chamber, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, ultimately, this was uh, interesting for, for people who want to get into the nitty-gritty. None of this matters to me until we see what the games look like and we see what the games are. Yeah. And I think E3 is going to be the big moment where Microsoft has to show what games are on the horizon that aren't, you know, Forza, Sea of Thieves, and Crackdown. Yeah. Especially given that, you know, a couple of the huge games got canceled, like, you know, uh, Scalebound and, and Fable Legends. And so what other games are coming exclusively? And then they have to showcase that third-party games are going to look better on this. So the big games like Destiny and Battlefront and Red Dead and Call of Duty and whatever uh, Ubisoft has this fall, like, they have to showcase that, we, you know, we need to see a side-by-side -side where people are like, oh, man, if I want to play Assassin's Creed or Red Dead, the place it's going to look best is on, you know, whatever the Scorpio is called. Yeah. I, I appreciate that you used Forza and Horizon, like, directly yeah. Back, yeah. back in a sentence without... Without, without, without talking re about Forza in, Horizon. In, invoking it's an off game. year. That's next year. <laughs> but it should be mentioned that they did say that um, nothing is going to be exclusive to Scorpio, which has, like, been... That's what they've said. Already line. Yep, so yep, yep. I'm glad. The three pillars. Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't upgraded to a Pro yet, a PS4 Pro, and I'm looking at the Scorpio uh, specs here. It looks like uh, four gigabytes for system, eight for games. Uh, they're both using GDDR5 RAM, which is in a, a a step up from the Xbox One had GDDR3 in it. Yeah, yeah, slower. definitely. Uh, the PS4 Pro though, uh, 218 gigabytes a second on the on the memory there. Uh, the the Scorpio is 326, so that is a substantial amount of bandwidth that developers are going to be able to harness mm. on the RAM. That that was the one nitty gritty like. Uh, aspect of the Scorpio that actually had me pretty excited. So hopefully that translates into fantastic looking games. Yeah, I guess uh, for, for those of you interested, I'll buzz through the comparison chart. Uh, so the CPU wise, we got eight custom x86 cores clocked at 2.3 gigahertz compared to uh, eight custom Jaguar cores at 1.75 on the Xbox oh, One wow. and eight Jaguar cores at 2.1 gigahertz on the PS4 Pro. Uh, GPU wise, it's clocked up. You got 40 customized compute units. <laughs> sure. I don't know. Bespoke. Yes. Uh, the, the megahertz are probably clocked it. Yeah. Uh, 1.172 gigahertz compared to, uh, on PS4 Pro, 911 megahertz. So that's a, that's a substantial boost. Yeah. And, uh, the RAM, this is, uh, you just mentioned it, Destin, the, not only the GDDR5, faster yeah. memory, but more of it, 50% more of it, 12 gigs of RAM compared to eight on Xbox One and on PS4 Pro as well. You mentioned the memory bandwidth, and we talked about the uh, hard drive 
and optical the the blue, optical drive Blu-ray drive situation for, uh, movie files you know, 4K UHD Blu-ray yeah, and that's one of the surprising PS4 things that PS4 Pro doesn't have. They, whereas the Xbox they make, One yeah, has. That was yeah. that was my, yeah. strange. Yeah. The hardcore did not take that well. well. Yeah. Sony, justifiably Sony, so. Yeah. They're yeah. like, you're like, Sony. Yeah. You're, a, oh, you're a home electronics. Yeah. You you have a movie studio yeah. that yeah. produces movies in 4K. Yeah. And your your wildly popular console yeah. can't play them. Yeah. Very strange. But Euro, Eurogamer also said it handles 4K 60 just fine. No one said if it handles HD DVDs, though, because I still have that copy of Peter Jackson's King Kong. <laughs> still got it. I still have a few of those. Yeah. We've still got our HD DVD yeah. player in our in our graveyard, case. in our elephant yeah. graveyard <laughs> yeah. over there. Um, so what we still don't know are what the box itself looks like, though uh, Eurogamer did suggest that they saw it and that uh, they they sort of hinted that they think, they think people will be impressed by the compactness of the box. I like the and you remember when Phil was here. Uh, a month or so back, I I asked him straight up, will it have a family resemblance to the S the same way that the PS4 Pro has a family resemblance to the recently redesigned PS4 Slim? And Phil did say yes. So look for it to look somewhat like the S, which is a great looking console. I like the S a lot. Yeah, it's a gorgeous console. Um, we did not, of course, get a price. You talked about that already, Destin. With the, and we just we just yeah. talked about that. Of course, no release date and no actual games uh, running or or announced or, or talked about other than that Forza tech demo. Uh, there will be improvements, Marty, like you started to talk about with if you have a 1080p TV, which I'm in the same boat. Or, or do do either of you have 4K? I'm still no. 1080. I'm I'm pretty close to upgrading. You're going to upgrade so, in, in time for yeah, this? Okay. I think so. I think that's going to be when it's time. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, I probably will not either, Marty, because I've I'm I'm planning for a car purchase this year, yeah. so that's yeah. you know once every twelve years it'll be, or it'll be twelve years. So yeah, I don't think I can quite spring for the mm-hmm. nice thousand yeah. uh, dollar TV. So yeah, I'm going to be in the same 1080p boat as well. You can get a pretty sweet uh, 4K TV for around six or seven hundred bucks now. You, uh, not I know from what I I've know seen. Your well, I want to yeah. If I'm going to buy it, I'm going to yeah. get I want to get something nice. That's not doesn't mean like the six thousand dollar thing, but yeah, you I don't keep a TV for a long time. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, and I'm curious. To say, I mean, I'm imagining this fall there's going to be a lot of retailers are going to have a lot of bundles. That's mm-hmm. true, well, especially yeah. Black Friday. That stuff, is a good which point. Which I heard yeah. some, the the, you know, rumors I heard was that Scorpio is coming out in November. Okay, that's what I heard. So I mean, it makes sense. A lot of yeah, I, I can imagine a lot of Black Friday deals. And that's kind of what I'm banking on. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm going to get a good deal on a TV when these bundles happen. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so improvements for if you're running on a 1080p display, micro, uh, apparently. You will have the full access to whatever whatever options mm-hmm. are on. F- if you have a 4K, uh, the options will be the same regardless of whether you're connected to a 1080p or a 4K display. So uh, whether you want to go like higher frame rate or uh, higher resolution, in the sense that if you're running a 900p game on Xbox One, uh, like actually what Mass Effect Andromeda is a good mm-hmm. example, right? That the game runs I think at 900 or somewhere right around there on the Xbox. So that's okay. it, that's going to get a bump up mm-hmm. with performance improvements to 1080p or whatever your display is capable of. Uh, smoother performance with no screen tearing. That's always appreciated. Mm-hmm. I just mentioned bump, a bump to 1080p for sub 1080p games. Improved texture filtering, which is sort of the super sampling that yeah. you were talking about and that the PS4 Pro also does. Better game DVR, which is always that's a fun little feature. It's always nice to be able to post mm-hmm. your. Well, if Finnegan were uh, sitting with us, he'd you know, post in his Halo 5 kills <laughs> on uh, online. And faster loading times, which you yeah. mentioned also, yeah. Marty. So uh, so far, so good with this thing. I, I still, again, I keep coming back to it. I still think none of it matters if the price is, is, yeah. uh, isn't right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my opinion hasn't swayed one way or another, given this information. This is yeah. what I expected. Yeah, it's exact, I feel yeah. the exact it's, same today that I did yesterday. Yeah, yeah we all still know it's still going to be super powerful. Still yeah. haven't seen that much <laughs> game stuff. I mean, considering anything. how like excited everyone has been to learn about this, and from what I could see in comments, like nobody seems disappointed. Um, which is always like a scary thing with a launch like this. You tell sure. people the specs of something you've said is the most powerful console ever, but everyone seems to be like, yeah, no, this is sati- yeah. I'm satisfied. This is yeah. good. All right, they did step one. Now they need to do steps two through ten. Yeah, I really yeah. want to see what it looks like. Honestly, yes. I'm I'm very excited to see yeah. the design. What it looks like, price and games. Yeah. <laughs> 
It looks like price in games. It looks like price in games. Yeah, that's my my <laughs> my, my guess is it comes out it in November. It's five hundred dollars. Horrible it looks like price skins. And games. That's just dollar signs yeah. and a bunch of different games. <laughs> on great. It. God, great. <laughs> you're the best. This is why we're not uh, designers. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. All right. So uh, so there you go. There. Uh, oh, I guess the one last point as we wrap up this topic, the this is, don't take this as gospel, but. In that Eurogamer piece, they talked about when they when they sort of suggested, "Oh, we think you'll like the look of the box, uh, and we'll learn more at E3." That sort of intentionally or not seemed to suggest that there will not be a pre E3 event to sort of show the yeah. box. And well, yeah, when Phil was here, he said that we were going to learn more about it before E3, and I don't know if that means this was it, right? Or if there will be an actual like singular event, maybe in May. But yeah, I'm, I'm sort of leaning towards like this you. Was the, I think this was it, yeah. and then. E3 will be the big group. Yeah. All right. So there is what we know uh, newly learned about Project Scorpio. Let's move on to some news. Uh, first up, NBA Jam fans. Anybody else? Jam yeah. fans. NBA Street fans? Street fans. I didn't play Street. Oh, you missed out there. It looks really good. We should watch Dude, Street, street mm -hmm. rules. Volume 2. Was the, that was the pinnacle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love both of those series. And a spiritual successor, at least on paper, is on the way very soon. Mm -hmm. We I, I got a I got a very unexpected e email from from a PR person saying, "Hey, we've got a new thing. Would you like to Would you like to prep it for announce on IGN?" Yeah. I'm like, "Well, sure. What is yeah. it?" Mm -hmm. Sends me over a trailer for NBA Playgrounds. Take a look at it. This looks like this totally channels the spirit yeah. of NBA Jam and NBA Street. This on on paper, this should be awesome. Yeah. So when we'll see how it, it plays. Like, boom, shakalaka. In my head. Yeah. Yeah. All that's right. What, that's what I do. <laughs> Every day, that's the voice that the NBA jam. <laughs> I can't quiet the boom yeah. shakalakas in my head. <laughs> I, Damn it, it get, NBA. It gets warm on fire. It yeah. gets warm outside, and in my head, I'm like, he's on fire. <laughs> oh, <you're laughs> <up>. Everyone <laughs> on the bus he's is like slowly up. like leading away from you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's NBA good. playgrounds. Uh, it is. It's out in May. It's coming right up. Yeah. And it uh, that we that's all we know. There is a trailer on IGN or our YouTube, so take a look at it. We don't really have a lot of other details, but it's coming to everything, including uh, I saw a lot of people were excited that it's coming to Switch. I know this isn't this isn't NBC, yeah. but it's just like yay, yeah, <laughs> something to something to play. Life on the after Switch Zelda, that's not yeah. Zelda. Yeah, yeah uh, I like yeah. I like it looks fun. Uh, I think coming out with Maze it's the you know NBA playoffs, so it's aligned with that. And yep. uh, I didn't like the big heads. Like everything about it, except everyone's heads See, were very large. That, yeah, but that's that's straight out Part of the jam. I don't like yeah. bob, I don't like bobbleheads. I, I don't like uh, I don't like Funko like Pops of the heads being too large. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. But it's oh. so cute. It's not so cute. It's hideous. It's monstrous. So you didn't play in like big head mode? No, I don't like big head mode. Wow. All right. I uh, should note there mimic? there are. There are uh, current players and legends in it yeah. as well. Like you can see in the screenshots, Will Chamberlain's in there. Uh, he had sex with twenty thousand women in his life. Did you know that? It, did it, did the number get up to twenty thousand? Allegedly, he had sex with twenty thousand women, which is it went horrifying. from ten to twenty thousand. He doubled Who in one massive. Who has time for that? Women. Who has? Yeah, or energy, stamina. Yeah, I don't know the heart. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, that's yeah, boy. Yeah, is Viagra just distilled from his? It's just blood? his sweat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, distilled. Well, it's good cardio. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> next up, <laughs> Agents of Mayhem. I was waiting for the spit take because you're like, what? Oh, that would have been great. No, but it would have been on me. So no, it's fine. Uh, do you guys remember Agents of Mayhem? I do. Yeah. yeah. We revealed it. Or, we uh, did reveal it. No, it's. Uh, but I, I say that in jest because th they totally went dark mm -hmm. after. Our E3 reveal. Uh, we revealed it last June and hasn't been heard from since. It is the next game from Volition, who, of course, are best known for the Saints Row series. Mm -hmm. And this game is not... It's set in the Saints Row universe, but it's not a Saints Row game. I mean, Agents of Mayhem is the most Saints Row phrase ever. Yeah. That's what yeah. Saints Row is. It's yeah. Like, it makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah, so it is... Uh, we just had a new preview. John Ryan from our team got to go play it, had a good time with it. And it's it's been given a release date, August fifteenth. Yeah, it's which, a solid release yeah. date. Yeah. Smart, right? Yeah, I mean, it's good. yeah, it's it's games like this, and then Shadow of War are smart because they're coming out in that sort of slow period after E three, but before the deluge of fall games. Yeah, which and, and again, assuming this oh, is, we need to get out of. Sorry, that. assuming that this is anything like Saints Row, which it, it looks like, yeah, John Ryan who previewed it uh, said it should have the Saints Row name on it. 
uh, it's a really those games are really fun and yeah. easy to consume. And in a lull before the end of this year, where we're getting a lot of big stuff, yeah. and I mean, people are gonna just die over Reddit. Yeah. It's like it's a good time for it to come out and people to like play something casually. Before. It sounds cool. Like it reminds me of this weird melding of like Sunset Overdrive with Overwatch because it is those like with, I think with some crackdown with some crackdown too. totally. Yeah. But so it was like tw I think twelve unique heroes and each of which are like bespoke characters. There's no character creation and it's twelve heroes, each of which all have a ton of different abilities. You choose three to go out with and you could swap between them on the fly. That's the trick. Yeah, and it sounds like each one has Mid very different movement, has very different personality, has very different uh, sort of weapons, and I don't know, That's it sounds and looks really cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I played an early build of yep. it at E3 and had a good time, and so did John Ryan when he played again, and I still think that th there's, uh, Deep Silver's got a little bit of work to do to, to really get this game back on people's radars. I think yeah. this would be a perfect candidate. Uh, you know, we've been seeing lately some playable demos of of games like well after release to try and mm -hmm. goose interest again. In fact, this week is was it, oh Dishonored Two. Oh yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. The three mission demo of Dishonored Two. Um, this is a I game I think you. would could stand to benefit. Like how about in mid to late July when there's just nothing out, drop a playable yeah. demo yeah. of Agents of Mayhem. That would I think that would that would do the job Great. for them. But uh, yeah, the, the, I think the the best way that uh, this. The, the John Ryan convinced me that that he had a good time was uh, playing this was telling me that it felt like a Saturday morning cartoon mm -hmm. that 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 the Saints Row characters would watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like that sort of level okay. of fun yeah. and absurdity. That's cool. Very much they were like comparing it like all of them were inspired by stuff like G.I. Joe and, and yeah. He-Man and everything. So that sounds awesome. Yeah. 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 So August 15th, mark your calendar there. Uh, I think that's. Is that the second major? Is there? A, 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 you mentioned Shadow of War. I think those are the two. Those are the two ones. so far yeah. for that have yeah. planted their f flag yep. in the ground for August. Yeah, and we've got, of course, Destiny two on September eighth. Yeah, yeah. So it's it, it has begun. Good. Yeah. People have started staking out their territory. Man, thinking about it, I really want South Park to come out this year. But then thinking about that, it's like, man, maybe you really want. Like they said, this fiscal year, which means April first to well, next year, April. But you you sort of accidentally stumbled on. Maybe a total coincidence, but yeah. maybe kind of a, a hint of when that can when yeah. That's coming out. Yeah, so uh, there are a bunch of toys that are tied into the upcoming game. What's it called? South Park? The Fractured South Park. Butthole. Uh, <laughs> built chamber. <laughs> that are coming out in September, and they are settings because they're uh, buildable sets. Shut up. <laughs> so they're settings uh, actually awesome. from the game, which to me, like... I didn't ask, it was McFarlane who I went through, but mm -hmm. it seems like why would you release that kind of merchandise that is set in-game without it being alongside Well, game? and yeah. stuff like art books in the past have been like, hey, here's the release date of the art book, and we're like, is this the release date of the game? And a lot yeah. of times it is. Yeah, but it's also with these, like, we have a bunch of South Park figures, and South Park, uh, those characters have existed, some of them, the superheroes, but the yeah. sets themselves are specifically from the game. Like, yeah. it just seems like it would be crazy to me to... Release those and not have the game. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I really, I really wanted to come out this year. Yeah, I know. I could totally be down for that. But yeah. then, like, I was thinking August would make sense. So late August. Yeah. Oh, hey, Maggie. Ugh, she's just wandering around. Like Maggie blind. is in the studio. Yeah. Today, I don't know if I don't know if anyone's been able out. to hear that, but Maggie's just been come on up here and clomping. Just... <laughs> she, she looks very heavy. I got gotcha. you. All right. Sixty-five pounds. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's all fine now. <laughs> Your voice was so strange. She's sixty-five pounds. <laughs> yeah. It's fine now. <laughs> Who's counting? Is that better. <laughs> Is that better? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, the release date for those toys was, I think, the eighth of September. So that would be uh, terrible because that's destiny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's, how, like but that's, that's, the, that's the that's the counteriest counter programming you could possibly have yeah. to another video game. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you think it could uh, the toys come out around the beginning of September and then the game comes out like a week or two after Destiny? That could be entirely yeah. possible. Yeah, I think. They'd what if, be okay what if, if South Park, the, case. the Fractured Butthole, is Destiny? God. Wow. You yeah, multiplayer? I know. Matt Stone, <laughs> yeah. Trey Parker's <laughs> Destiny 2. Uh, <laughs> all right. Sega's teasing something Bayonetta related. Hmm. Someone explain this to me. What could this be? I have no idea. Mark. All right. So there's a bunch of possibilities. One, which our audience probably won't care about, is the fact that Bayonetta 2 might come to Switch, which is totally what I think is going to happen because Nintendo published Bayonetta 2. Yeah. I mm -hmm. don't know how that stuff works, so I don't know if we're going to see a Bayonetta 2 port on Xbox, PS4, and PC. 
I which it would that. be cool because that game rules, that and really a lot cool. more people should play that game. And we are sort of lacking 3D character action games. Like, yeah. And Bayonetta is among the best I, in the last five years. I talk all the time about my love of Ninja, Ninja Gaiden, Gaiden yeah. and this is Bayonetta 2 is probably the closest we've gotten yeah, to totally, that. Totally, yeah. and especially on Xbox. Like, you know, Xbox didn't get you know Neo this year, which was it, sort of scratching that itch, even though it was a little soulsy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really hope it is Bayonetta 2 coming to everything because that is a game that so many people slept on just by virtue of. It Everything being on people the Wii having U. a Wii U, yeah, um, and it is an incredible game. So um, there was a April Fool's joke going around that uh, a little going to bring eight the, bit one, yeah, the, yeah. Oh, uh, I was talking about the where they were talking about the Wii U line on Switch, oh. where basically they're just going to bring a bunch of Wii U games to Switch, which we all think they should. I mean, do anyway. they, yeah, they're already doing so it. Is that uh, an April with, Fool's yeah. joke? Cart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> isn't that just what we want? Yeah, yeah. it's what we want. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, somebody I, made a very convincing trailer. Yeah. Mm. for that, I really hope this is Bayonetta coming to everything. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll see. I think it's find out next week. Yeah, I think it's later on this week or early next week. It's when the countdown ends. So yeah, yeah. It was, I was thinking it was a week from yesterday. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. So I guess yeah, we'll see a week from now next week's show. Mm -hmm. uh, we happy few, Marty. I know you are a huge fan of video game based cinematic universes because I, I follow you. Am on I gonna Twitter. go on a rant? <laughs> the Call of Duty thing? Seriously? Announcing their cinematic universe and just rambling about it and being like, oh, one game might be Black Ops and another game might be Modern Warfare. And I'm like, what are you doing? Just make one movie. Make one movie that is decent, Cow. and then you can start from there. <laughs> Marvel didn't start off with the cinematic universe. Marvel released Iron Man, and before Iron Man, like, okay, so Iron Man was already oh, go. <laughs> Tell us it. how no, you I really feel. So Iron Man was already shot. It was in the can, and then they brought in uh, Brian Michael Bendis, and they were like, "Hey, we need you to to write this thing." And he's like, "What is it?" And he's like, "It's a stinger scene, and it's an after the credits scene, which was the Avengers thing." So after the movie was finished filming, and after it already had test audiences, they were like, "All right, we're gonna make this a cinematic universe because we know this is good." Mm -hmm. That's what you do is you make a good movie. That's all. That's how you start. You make one good movie. But Call of Duty, though. But yeah, We Happy Few is getting a movie, <laughs> which I find weird because that's not even a video game you can buy yet. Nope, not for a little I mean, while. I yeah. really enjoyed what we played of that game. Yes, I so like that game a lot. Yeah. I feel like I was warmer on it than um, a lot of other people mm -hmm. were. And it's like for everyone who's ever wanted a Bioshock movie, it's similar in tone. Like, yeah. I That makes sense to me as a movie. It's just like oh, yeah. a really interesting world where the politics yeah. of it's really interesting, and I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Do you guys think it'll translate well to... Well, as long as they don't adapt it from the game directly, but mm -hmm. like I assume, because we barely have a game, that they're taking the premise and the feel yeah. or something and then adapting it. Well, and and from that, what that I've heard, the game, yeah, and from what I've heard, the game is going to be leaning a lot heavier into the narrative part, like which was yes. that opening, which was the sort of you yeah, know we more streamlined E3 last stuff. Year, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, and and I think they're going to double down on that as opposed to the um, sort of open world sandboxy, uh, uh, randomly generated stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Variety reporting that uh, the developer Compulsion Games has partnered with Gold Circle Entertainment uh, and the uh, and DJ Two Entertainment, who the, the, the DJ producers of the recently announced Sleeping Dogs movie. Now that I can get behind Sleeping, Sleeping Dogs, yeah, Sleeping perfect Dogs, movie. yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect movie. So we got a we <laughs> have a few movies. It'll be the perfect video game. Movie. <laughs> we happy few coming to theaters. Uh, Call of Duty coming to theaters. Sleeping Dogs coming to theaters. Just Cause coming to theaters. Witcher's coming to theaters. Witcher. Hitman's already been there twice unsuccessfully. Oh, yeah. Well, the, la the the Tomb Raider casting and photos have been cool. So that far. is yeah. true. Alicia yes. Vikander, who's an Oscar-winning actress, it looks exactly like Lara Croft yeah. in the reboot. Yeah. Um, but uh, I said the exact same thing about Assassin's Creed, and that movie is not good. Yeah. Darn it. Yep. I think We Happy Few, um, I would prefer that as an animated movie, the way that Marvel and DC do their animated movies. I really don't think it needs to be live action because that takes away some of the aesthetic. Yeah. Or at least, like, I, I feel like it, it would be hard to do a movie that looks like that on a really. I think they should get. That would make it all the more budget. cooler, though. They should get Terry it's Gilliam true. to write and direct this. He did Brazil and 12 Monkeys and Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, and he was a member of Monty Python, which sort of <laughs> reminds me of this. Really? Strong call. Yeah. Monty Python? Yeah. The Flying Circus? Okay. I think it's a very similar sense of humor. You know Monty Python, right? Yeah. Okay. I was. I'm Australian. For a it's, I was like, please say yes. Same family. No, no, no. I was surprised <laughs> yeah. because, like, I, I, I don't think the humor is similar. I mean, to like, not to, not to, like, meaning of life or anything, but like, I think, I think it's similar to Terry Gilliam. I'm good friends with Terry Gilliam. Right. <laughs> okay. He paid you. I get it. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's move on uh, to the market players report. We're starting to run out of time. We have a, we're a bit of a tight schedule this morning because. Everybody needs to get in this studio today and record cool things. It's fancy day. Yeah, it is. So, uh, Destin Legary, you're going to go your way. 
What can we spend our money on this week? Uh, nothing at retail. Digital, we have Lego City Undercover for $60. This game rules. Game. It shouldn't be $60, but this game rules. Use Your Words for $15. Four-Sided Fantasy, $10. Punch Club, $10. The Inner World, $15. Skykeepers, $15. And in case you missed it, Thimbleweed Park. Yes, I mentioned it briefly at the very end that. of the show last yeah. week. It's real good. I reviewed it. Uh, it's a point-and-click adventure game in the classic of classiest way possible. Uh, it's set in 1987 and, in fact, made to look like a 1987 LucasArts yeah. adventure game with the major exception that it has full voice acting that didn't yeah. really come around until the early 90s. But yeah. uh, it's excellent. You are going to get more out of it if you played all those games back in the day just because there's a ton of references to LucasArts and uh, a lot of Monkey Island nods here mm -hmm. and there and Maniac Mansion and such and such. But, boy, it's exceptionally good. Really awesome. good game. Awesome. Yeah, I'm so 20 cool. hour. It took me 20 hours. Oh, wow. And it's a, and it's a $20 game. That's awesome. So a dollar per hour. It, it's on Xbox One. I, I played it on PC, so I don't know how annoying or yeah. not annoying it is on a gamepad. Yeah. But yeah. still, it's... It's out there. It's on Xbox. Give it a go. Yeah. Lana, you were a big champion for this game. Dishonored 2, free playable demo at the Marketplace. The you game. absolutely play it if you haven't already. I think it's the first three levels, um, of which I think the third one is one of my favorites. No, I mean, they're all good. D just play it. It's great. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, April Games of Gold, Rise Summer Rome, April 1st to 30th. Yes. The Walking Dead Season 2, April 16th to May 15th. Those are Xbox One. Uh, Darksiders, April 1st to 15th on 360, and Assassin's Creed Revelations, the 16th to 30th. Or solid games. Those are all <laughs> games that I like a lot. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what about getting... I know this isn't happening because there's uh, uh, two not Microsoft-exclusive projects at Remedy. What about Microsoft buying the rights to rise from the barely living Crytek. husk of Crytek, Crytek. Of, yeah. of Crytek and handing it to Remedy to do Rise 2. I think they could do yeah, cool. an awesome job on that yeah. game. They get behind that. I just want a Rise 2. Well, you want a good Rise 2, though. Well, yeah, you? yeah. Build upon <laughs> what you started, like gorgeous yeah. visuals, and just make a little yeah. bit better. So the thought occurs to me. Yeah. Maybe Phil Spencer can look that up if he's listening. <laughs> Why not? You can get behind that. Yeah. 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 Anything else? What That's else? it. That was everything? Cool. Yeah. Uh, let's do a little trivia real quick before we hit the road. I have to admit I modified Kevin from Illinois' question a bit uh, just to make it a little more fair, a little more fun, but I'm, Kevin gets the credit regardless. And that is uh, credit for this question. How many Microsoft points made up a dollar? Do you guys remember this? So uh, the 360, of course, Microsoft points, the major currency. Why did they do that? They hung on to that for many, many years. Uh, there's, there is a... There is a mathematical formula that you can do to convert them from uh, into United States dollar currency. I, re I do realize a lot of this puts you at a slight disadvantage because <laughs> during this entire era, you were dealing with Australian currency. Yeah, but I here. still remember like the cards that I got. They, come, they came on these cards. Yeah. It was usually 1,500 points. And I'm trying to remember how much those cost. And I'm like, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. This is tough. So, all right. Your choices are, so uh, one U.S. dollar, is it 50 Microsoft points? Is that is a dollar equal to 80 Microsoft points, 100 Microsoft points, or 125? Uh, we didn't write down answers, but that's okay. I'm going to go, I'll go to Alana first, in fact. Mm, why? But, okay, <laughs> why? Uh, why? I can come back to you. Uh, no, I think, I think I'm going to go with B, 80. Okay. Uh, Marty. I'm also going with B because I, that was before I even looked at the answers. That was the thing that popped in my head, and I remember it was one of those pain in the ass things where it wasn't fifty and it wasn't a dollar because it was always one of those I had like lingering yeah. dingleberries mm -hmm. of points in my account. That's probably part of their strategy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> never a good, never a good situation to have lingering dingleberries. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's redundant because I feel like a dingleberry in and you know, of itself. It has to yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's what so. the that cranberry song was about. <laughs> Destin. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go with 80 also, so B. Oh well, that doesn't. All right. I hope we're all wrong. I hope this happens. I mean, if you do the math, it even. Yeah, never mind. Well, that's the question: is doing the math, and yeah. you you all did the math properly. Yay! Yes. 80 points. Maths. Yeah, 80 points was a dollar yeah. uh, in in U.S. currency. So uh, the standings stay how they are. 
Marty up to four, Destin up to five, Alana at three. So Alana and Phil, thank you. I'm giving you <laughs> all the team. credit. <laughs> Dream team. If you would like to try and stump these guys, send your Xbox-related trivia question in. Uh, include four multiple-choice answers. Mark the correct one in your email, uh, and send it to unlocked at ign. Dot com. Let's leave now. <laughs> but before we do, uh, I want to remind everybody, IGN is hosting The Fate of the Furious Red Carpet. Everybody, everybody's going to see that movie. I'm going to go Franchise see that movie. Franchise is yeah. mammoth. Rock throws a, a torpedo at one point. Yeah. It's very exciting. Are you serious? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'm very serious. So yeah, we're actually hosting the Red Carpet, Carpet premiere featuring the cast. Uh, it's going to be live Saturday, April 8th. That's this Saturday. 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. You can watch on YouTube.com slash IGN on the IGN homepage itself or on our Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash IGN. Oh, and apparently we're streaming it live on Twitter as well. So anywhere we are, this thing is going to be, yeah. which is, of course, twitter.com slash IGN. It's going to be hosted by our own Terry Schwartz, who's incredible. Yes, yeah. from our L.A. team. Uh, Alana, what are you up to? What can we follow you um, to do. Probably the biggest thing for me right now is planning for um, Celebration next week. A bunch of us are going Star to Wars Celebration, Celebration in Orlando, so um, come say hi if you see us around, and we're going to be making a lot of really weird, cool culture stuff, so like the weirdest toys and collectibles I can find. And, nice. Um, cosplay roundups and stuff like that, so coverage of that will be starting uh, next week on Wednesday, I believe. Yeah, and we know uh, EA announced that uh, that's where Battlefront 2 is going to be revealed. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to be checking that out with uh, Joe Scrubbles from the UK team. Very, very excited to see that. Mm -hmm. Should be fun. Good stuff. Marty? Uh, you can follow me at McBiggity, uh, and I reviewed Ukulele this week. Um, I gave it a seven, which is good. Seems insane that we didn't talk about that. <laughs> that's fine. I mean, the game comes out next week. That's yeah, that's why yeah, yeah. I, I well, double checked. I was like, is it Ukulele? Oh, wait, yeah, yeah. no, it's the review went um, up this week. Game yeah, comes out next and it was week. A, we, had to, we had to turn this around quick. But uh, yeah, gave it a seven. Uh, I like it. Uh, it has some problems, but uh, if you're a fan of banjo, and whatnot, uh, I think you're going to enjoy this. been some interesting reviews on that as well. I've seen people very, very hot and very, very I've cold. seen two out of 10s, and I've seen nine out of 10s. Yeah, it's crazy. Are it's you, I mean, both of you love banjo so much. Marty, were you, Were you? I mean, a seven is good, but Seven's good. were you disappointed? I was slightly disappointed, yeah, but it's still ultimately a good game. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not up to the caliber of like Banjo or Mario or uh, Ratchet, but it's better than Blinks. <laughs> it's got that going for it. <laughs> Excellent. Destin? April's a pretty slow month, but if you uh, like Unlock, don't forget to leave a review on iTunes. That actually helps out the show a lot. I'll be covering a lot of Destiny over on Fireteam Chat. Fireteam Chat airs every Friday at 5. We're talking about Destiny 2 and what is going on in the current world of Destiny. You actually have your act together such that your show publishes reliably on the same day at Every the Friday same at time? Yeah. That's it's incredible. That way for like 100 episodes. Wow. That is well, impressive. Just, That's what happens when France is, on you. Well, no, it's full of video boys, right? That's yeah. like you're all on the video team, everyone on that show. That's what we have to do. As opposed to Beyond, well, where it's like halfway through a Wednesday, and I'm like, Max, did you do Pub Info? Man. He's like, nah, did you? I was like, oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can follow me on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. Uh, oh, we updated all of us here and a few other folks that aren't uh, on camera at this very moment. Uh, Brandon Tyrell, Miranda Sanchez, Luke Riley out of the Australian office. We updated our top 25 Xbox One games list. We give it a spring refresh and a fall refresh mm -hmm. to account for new things that come out. Four new games hit the list and some reshuffling of some of the other ones. So if you're curious, just put that into Google and that's the easiest way to find it. Those lists are really hard. Yeah, I really don't like doing them. It's like it's like every time that there's like Painful. you decide on something, I'm like, wait, that should totally be higher, and then someone else disagrees, and you're just like, oh. well, it's also you have that kill your darlings because it's like, well, Dishonored two came out, so we need to add that to the list. And I'm like, well, what are we gonna cut? What are we it's good. it's yeah. so hard, but uh, yeah, we all wrote you know, love so why we love certain things. And yes, yeah, a lot of time goes into those. Yeah, it's always it's always fun to at least read them and argue about them, which is which <laughs> yeah. is what you are. That's I what welcome, we do. I welcome everybody to do that. Uh, and remember, hey, if you bought a Switch, because it's the hot new console, everybody's loving it, playing it, Nintendo Voice Chat, we have a podcast dedicated to it that's weekly just like this one. They have been uh, doing a lot of great stuff around the Switch launch and ever since, so uh, just look up Nintendo Voice Chat. Maybe give them a listen, too. That is Jose Otero, Ryan Altano, and the uber boss man himself, yeah. mm -hmm. Per Schneider, uh, is not a corporate suit that sits in a corner window office. He... Sits right outside, and he does podcasts, which yeah. is uh, one thing I love about this company is yeah. the fact that the 
co-founder is on the air yeah. ta- talking about his love of Nintendo games yeah. Yeah. every okay. single week. So uh, do be sure to check that out. And that'll do it. So we will be back. I'm actually uh, very fortunate to get to go on vacation for a little bit. So I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. You are I'm out forever. You're on the road yeah. for work, not for vacation. Yeah. Uh, I won't be back until the last week of April. So next week is obviously celebration. After that, I'm doing a very cool thing for uh, May's IGN first. Yes. Uh, so I won't be in for the next two weeks. So Marty oh, Destin. Jesus. Yeah. You guys, <laughs> have fun. Where are the adults? You guys are in charge. Uh, right, we're like, like, get, get Finnegan in here. We're going to do good. Find, we're going to do good. We'll be and fine. then find a fourth we'll for the fine. next couple of weeks. So. Uh, I will see you guys in a little while, so will Alana, but uh, be sure to come back next week because the the rest of the crew here has got your back. It'll be okay. (laughs) Bye. 20,000.